Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Wax Mode channel. In today's video, I have the highly requested Meguiar's Hybrid Ceramic Wax versus the Dallas Paint Correction Armor Shine and Protect SiO2 Spray. This is just going to be a baseline water behavior statistic so that we can gauge durability down the road. I'm going to show you guys how Armor behaves compared to HCW here. Armor retails at $25 for 16 fluid ounces. Scott does make the note that it is very highly concentrated. You can dilute up to one to one with water and still get great performance. I have armor on the right side of the test panel here, and on the left side, I have Meguiar's Hybrid Ceramic Wax, which retails for $15 over the counter for 26 fluid ounces. Now, normally, I wouldn't be comparing these two products one-to-one -to, -one to each other because Hybrid Ceramic Wax is more comparable to something like CarPro's Hydro 2, Gion Wet Coat, your spray and rinse types of sealants. And DPC Armor, I would be comparing more against your regular standard spray-on-dry, wipe-in-dry products like Gion Cure and CarPro's Reload. These products are not water activated, so you're not going to see an improvement in the water behavior if you rinse them off immediately after working them into the paint. Different compared to hybrid ceramic wax where it does, there's no cure period for HCW. You can rinse it off immediately after applying it to the surface, and that's not going to hurt its performance in any way. Now with DPC Armor, Scott just mentioned that it's going to take an 8 to 12 hour cure period before it's fully cured to the surface, and that could possibly impact performance if you go ahead and wet it too soon after applying it to the paint before it's had a chance to fully cure on the surface. But that's not something that I'm seeing out of armor here. This rinse, this specific rinse in this clip is one hour after applying armor and HCW onto the paint. Now I've also run a five day test with DPC Reflect and DPC Armor here just to see if there's any improvement if we go ahead and do allow them to cure for a longer period before rinsing them. But that's not something that I noticed, and I'll show you guys that clip later on in the video. This is the first wash and rinse using Meguiar's Hyperwash. What you're going to notice is HCW maintains higher hydrophobicity through the wash and rinse. Um, very, it's not going to be impacted by the surfactants in the soap. It's got crazy tight beading, very fast water sheeting. The DPC armor side is definitely impacted by the surfactants in the soap. So it's going to be sheeting off much slower than what we were seeing at the beginning of the test. And I know this is going to be the driving force behind the conversation down in the comment section below. But you guys can, you know, let us know what you want to see out of your products. Um, I think on the right side, we've got the slower sheeting. It's, it's probably below average hydrophobics and surface tension durability in the short term especially compared to other SiO2 based spray sealants on the market. You know, with all the silicon dioxide based spray sealants that I've worked with, um, most notably Gion Cure and CarPro's Reload, we are very spoiled by extremely hydrophobic short-term performance. And we think of Reload and Cure being great coating toppers because they're able to maintain that hydrophobic nature of the original coating, whether it's C-Quartz, C-Quartz UK, um, Gion Prime, Gion Pure, these types of silicon dioxide based coatings are extremely hydrophobic and the idea is we want to use a maintenance topper that's not going to reduce that original hydrophobic performance. So now I guess is probably a proper time to start talking about, you know, why are we looking for something that's hydrophobic in nature? Why is water beating this pinnacle of product performance? And I suppose there's no real easy way to answer that. You know, we all define performance differently and at the end of the day, you know, you get to the point to where we want what we want. Um, no one's convinced me otherwise to say that something that's higher hydrophobic in nature is going to be a, a less attractive feature on the paint compared to a less hydrophobic surface. A more aggressive product in terms of beading and sheeting is going to be a better durability indicator for me. You know, if DPC armor behaves the same after one wash as paint that doesn't have any sort of protection on it, I have no durability indicator. Has the product survived on the paint is always the question I'm asking when I go through my maintenance washes. And I don't want to be guessing at the answer. Now, one of the biggest arguments that guys have tried to use to convince me that higher hydrophobic surfaces are worse off than less hydrophobic surfaces is this idea of beading versus sheeting. And I've already done a couple videos on this topic, but I'm going to point it out here again. When I get close to the paint using the shower setting on the hose, I can obviously create that water sheet much easier on the right side of the paint that's less hydrophobic compared to the HCW side of the paint that is extremely more hydrophobic. And you know, that's true up to a certain extent. If I go ahead and allow both sides to fully dry off now, I'm going to have significantly more spotting on the left side compared to the right side. However, I am the one controlling the flooding behavior on the paint. I'm the one getting up close with the water nozzle 
to make sure that the right side is sheeting off much more water compared to the left side. Your hard water sprinkler head is not going to conveniently get up close to your paint to ensure that it's fully flooding the surface on the sheeting side to where it's going to have less spotting compared to the beading side. The rain cloud above is not going to make sure it gets down close to your paint to dump enough volume of water at one time to form that connected sheet across the entire paint panel. You can see here, since I'm the one controlling the action, I can change the setting on the hose to make sure I'm flooding off or sheeting off just as much water on the left side compared to the right side. So we can't discredit the behavior on the left side of the paint as being worse off than the behavior on the right side based off a test that I have, I'm in full control over. Now what about rainwater? And here in Florida we get pretty much 8 months of rain out of the year. I don't see problematic spotting as a result of rainwater because it's not a hard water source. You know, once that water dries up on the paint, it's not leaving very much behind of anything. The biggest problematic spotting occurs as a result of reclaimed water here, which is extremely hard coming out of the sprinklers. But one of the main arguments, again, is there's going to be a lot more rainwater on the more hydrophobic side compared to the less hydrophobic side. And this right here is a demonstration of what rainwater looks like when it's hitting paint. Again, it's not enough volume of water hitting it at one time to fully form that connective water sheet so that it sheets nice and smoothly off the paint surface. This is what it looks like after a rainstorm here in Florida with a less hydrophobic surface compared to a high hydrophobic surface. Another benefit of a high hydrophobic surface is the air blower when you're drying it completely blasts the water beating off the paint. So it's much easier to cleanly dry the surface without having to go back with the drying towel afterwards. And that just helps reduce the amount of hard water residue that can be left behind on the surface. On a less hydrophobic surface, it's going to take more effort with the blower. It can't easily push the water off the surface and we're going to have some evaporation that occurs as a result. And evaporation combined with, high, with hard water is going to leave behind more hard water residue. Now if I'm working on paint that's less hydrophobic, what I'm going to do first is get the hose nozzle out, switch to the flutter setting, and then sheet the water off the paint first. Then go over it with the drying towel and then blow dry out some of the edges and creases. On the areas of the paint that are crazy hydrophobic that I've coated, you know, I can just go straight to the blower. I don't have to sheet the water off first. The blower is going to get all of the water off the paint. You can see the gloss between them is pretty comparable as well. Um, both look absolutely phenomenal on the paint. I did prep the paint using Meguiar's M210 finishing polish followed up with prep all from clean strip but the biggest factor in gloss enhancement does not come from the individual products that you apply on top it comes from your prep work so you know if your prep work is not good if you haven't gone over it with the polisher with abrasives then you're not going to be able to maximize any sort of gloss enhancement all right in this clip here i have dpc's reflect this is their shine and gloss hybrid spray wax on the left side of the panel i've got armor on the right side. This is after five days of waiting before this first initial rinse. And if you compare this water behavior on the armor on the right side here with the behavior after the one hour mark, which is what I did for the first initial rinse against hybrid ceramic wax, you know, you can see it's very comparable. So I'm not seeing any performance increase if we allow it to sit long before we rinse it on the surface. Now to try and wrap this video up, I don't know exactly what's inside of hybrid ceramic wax that allows it to do what it does. All I do know is that it does exactly what I want it to do in the short term for the price that I'm paying for it. And, you know, I can't confirm if there really is silicone dioxide inside of hybrid ceramic wax. What I do know is that we've had a lot of silicone-based spray products in the over-the-counter market that I've tested out, none of which competes in the short term against HCW in terms of hydrophobicity. And compared to the SiO2 spray sealants, you know, the standards in the market like Gion Cure and, Re and CarPro Reload, HCW behaves a lot more similarly to those in the short term compared to DPC Armor. So I think if you're looking for a certain type of behavior out of the product that you're working with, you know, if you want a high surface tension product, uh, DPC Armor is not going to give you that type of performance in the short term. I mean, if you're using it as a product that you're, you know, you're going over the paint every time you wash the car, I think it's going to work fine. I think a lot of guys are going to enjoy the gloss that you get out of it and, and definitely the slickness. But guys like me, I'm starting to get more picky with the type of performance that I'm looking for out of a spray sealant. Um, I'm really looking for products that are going to better bridge that gap to the coating level performance. And I'm not saying that HCW is a perfect product or it's going to be something that's a coating level product. Um, all I can say is that in the short term, it's doing exactly what I want it to do at a price that I think is really fantastic.
And I'm not done working with DPC armor. I'm gonna see if I can keep uh, keep working with it. See if we can test grime release capabilities. See if that the silicone dioxide based content is any better at releasing dirt and grime from the paint prior to going over it with the wash mitt. But I would love to hear you guys' thoughts and comments. I'm going to try and get to as many as I can. I know I have a feeling that this is going to open the floodgates for debate. But also, I mean, if you guys are seeing different results than what I'm getting here, let guys know in the comment section below. I'm one product tester in one environment on one type of paint. You could definitely see different results, so I'd love to hear that. If you guys have any other product suggestions, go ahead and leave them below, and I'll see if I can get to it. But thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.